Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create reads in Illustrator by creating your own custom brushes. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what we're going to be creating. We're going to be making both of these reads in Illustrator. And the difference between the two is that this one has paired leaves and this one, the leaves are alternating around the wreath. So you're going to see how to create both of those brushes and then how to apply them to create the wreaths. To get started with our wreaths, I'm just going to create a new blank Illustrator document. It can be any size that you like. I'm going to select the Ellipse tool, make the fill black and remove the stroke and just draw out a small ellipse. This is going to be my leaf, so I'm targeting the Direct Selection tool and clicking on the topmost anchor point here and then click here on Convert Selected Anchor Points to Corner. This just makes that a pointy corner. Now still with the Direct Selection tool selected, I can come in here and adjust the shape of this ellipse till I get something that I'm happy with. Once I have the basics of my leaf shape, I want to cut out a small piece from the bottom of it. So I'm going to click on the pen tool. I'm going to switch so that I'm working with a white fill color so I can see what I'm doing. Now, even if you're not familiar with using the pen tool, this is going to be really simple. You're just going to click and drag in an upwards direction here. You'll click approximately in the middle of the leaf and drag in a slightly upwards direction so that you get a sort of curve here then Alt or Option click back on the anchor point and that stops it taking off in an upwards direction. Then you'll come back down outside the bottom of the leaf and you'll click and drag over here to the left to make a curve. Now the pen tool is still stuck to your mouse at this point so to get rid of it or to stop this behavior Control or Command click just outside of where you are working and that just turns off the pen tool. Now I can come in here with the Direct Selection tool, click on any of these anchor points and just adjust the shape that I've made here. When I'm happy with what I have here, I can go ahead and remove this piece from the leaf. I'm just going to make a minor change here. I'm going to select both these shapes, the leaf shape and the cutout by selecting over them with the Selection tool and from the Pathfinder, which you can get to by choosing Window and then Pathfinder, because the cutout is in front of the leaf, I'm going to choose Minus Front, and that will just cut that piece out of the leaf. Now I'll press Control or Command Zero to go back to viewing my document or my artboard, and I'll Shift drag on this shape just to resize it. Now I'm going to rotate it because it's going to be the first leaf in my wreath. I'm also going to Alt drag away a duplicate of it because I'm going to use that for the second wreath in a minute. I'll just tuck a copy of it out of the way there. Next thing I'm going to do is to create a line. So I'm going to the line segment tool. I'm just going to click and drag starting a little bit to the left of the leaf holding the shift key down to constrain this to a horizontal line. I'm going to make sure that my Stroke is black and I'm going to increase the stroke width and then from this uniform drop down list which is in actual fact our brush profiles I'm going to select this width profile and just makes the one end fat and one end much skinnier. I'm just going to adjust that and let's position our leaf relative to that in a good starting position. And perhaps pointing out a little bit more. So if I'm happy with my starting point for my leaf, I'm going to select it. And now I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. Now the wreath I'm making right now is the one that has paired leaves. So I'm only concerned about moving this particular leaf along this side of this line right now. So I'll click Preview. I think about 11 copies will be pretty good. So I'll click 11 and I'm just going to adjust the horizontal value to move these away from each other. The other thing I want to do is to make these get smaller the further they go along. Well, to do that, I'm just going to decrease this horizontal and the vertical scale. 
Now I've got it down to 95 here. I'm going to do it the same to both of them so that the leaves are scaled in proportion. I'm going to increase the horizontal spacing just a little bit and I think maybe a couple of extra leaves would be nice. So this is pretty much the leaf structure of my wreath but you can see that it started to move away from the line. Well we can solve that by adjusting the vertical option here. And what I'm going to do is just move it up minus one pixel and that's pretty much got it in position so I'm going to click OK. The line however is just a little bit long so I'm going to select it and just shrink it back down again. I want it to stick out just a little bit beyond the end of this particular leaf. Now I'm not sure what happened there but I'm just going to get rid of whatever that was. Now I've got this leaf, what I want to do is to take it and its transformation and put it up here. So what I'm going to do first of all is reflect it. I'll choose Object, Transform, Reflect. And I want to reflect this horizontally exactly the way we're seeing it here. In a minute we're going to move it up here. But I also want to make a copy of it because I don't want to lose my original set of leaves. So I'll just click Copy. Now I've got two sets but all I need to do is to move the set that I just reflected up so that it sits above the line. I'm going to make sure that the first leaf is in a correct position. You can see that the other leaves are floating a little bit but that's easy to solve because we have in the appearance panel a transform option that is controlling just this top set of leaves not the bottom ones. So I'm going to double click the transform. I'm just going to adjust back down this vertical option. Oh, but it would help if we had the preview turned on so we could see what we were doing. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll click OK. Now the only thing I need to do is to add a leaf to the end here. So I'm going to select over all of these pieces here with the selection tool. And I'm going to expand them with Object Expand Appearance. And I'll choose Object Ungroup. And I'm going to do that until Ungroup is no longer an option. That tells me that all of these pieces have now been broken apart so every single one of them is on its own. So I can select this one and Alt or Option drag a duplicate away. I'm just going to rotate it and then put it back on the very end of the stem. Now once I've got that in position I'm going to select the entire object, all the individual pieces and press Ctrl or Command G to group them back together again. So they're actually going to travel as a group. Now that I've got the leaves I'm ready to go ahead and create the wreath and I'm going to do that using a brush. I'm going to create this set of leaves as a brush. I'll choose Window and then Brushes because I need to see my brushes palette. And I'm going to drag and drop this set of leaves into my brushes palette. And when I'm asked what type of brush I want to create, it's going to be an art brush. So I'll click Art Brush and click OK. Now there are a couple of things we need to check here. One of them is that it's going to be stretched to fit stroke length. We want to set our colorization method to tints. And we want to make sure that the direction of the brush is the direction of the leaves here. So this is a correct setting here but if it were not I would be adjusting it. And I'll click OK. So this is now a brush in my brushes palette. I'm just going to move these leaves out of the way just off the artboard. And let's go and create our wreath with this new leaf brush. I'm going to select the ellipse tool and drag out a circle by holding the shift key as I drag the ellipse out. I'm going to reverse the fill and stroke so there's a stroke but there's no fill. So that I can apply the brush to both halves of this circle individually I'm going to need to cut it into two pieces and we can do that using the scissors tool. It's here under the eraser tool. All you'll do is to click once on each of the top and bottom anchor points. Click there and click here. And what that does is it breaks this circle into two pieces. Here's one half, here's the other half. 
and now we can apply the brush to each half individually. So with one of these sides selected, I'm going to click on the brush, and I'll select the other side and click on the brush again. Now you can see that there's a slight problem in that the brush is travelling the wrong way around this half of the circle. Well, it's is really easy to solve. Let's go and select this half of the circle. I'm going back to the pen tool. And all I need to do is to click once here on this anchor point. And what that does is it reverses the path of this side of the half circle. And then I'll control click away just to finish off with the pen tool. Now I can grab both halves of this circle and put them back together, join them at the base. If I wanted to, I could also rotate them slightly outwards and then join the bases up together. And there's the first of our two wreaths. This is the one that has the paired leaves on it. Now let's go ahead and create the second wreath. In this case, the leaves are going to alternate either side of the stem. They're not going to be running around it in pairs. So I've got my first leaf here. I'm going to, again, create a line for the stem. So I'm going back to the line tool. I'm going to click and drag out a line that I can use holding this shift key to constrain this to a straight line. I'm going to make sure that the stroke is black. Increase the stroke quite a bit. Use one of these brush profiles, this triangular one, just to make it a nice sort of triangular shape. And now I'm going to select my leaf using the selection tool and just place it in position. Again, we're going to use that same tool. We're going to use Distort and Transform. I'm going to click on the leaf and now choose Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. Now I'm going to turn on Preview and I'm also going to turn on my number of copies. And this time I'm going to need probably about double the number of leaves that I did last time because these were in pairs. This time I'm going to use this one leaf to go all the way along. So I need double the number. So I'll type 22, and now I want them to start moving in a horizontal direction, so I'm going to start that movement by just increasing the horizontal value. Now I also want them to get smaller, so let's just start reducing the scale. I'm going to reduce it to 95, horizontal and vertical. And now before we start working with the problem that these leaves are moving away from the line, let's go and make them alternate. And we do that by clicking Reflect Y. And now when we start working with the vertical, we're going to see some different behavior. You can see that the leaves, every alternate leaf, is now moving up away from every other leaf. And all of them are now sitting along the line. But I think that horizontally they're moving too far now. So I'm going to move mine back a little bit more. I'm going to increase the number of copies. And I'm going to increase the scale a little bit because I think they're sizing down just a little bit too fast. So I'm going to take them up to 97. And again, back off the horizontal just a little bit. So if I'm happy with that, I'll click OK. I again need to shorten this line because it's too long, so I'm just going to shorten it. I'm going to zoom in here because I think the line could be rotated very slightly just to make sure that it's evenly positioned away from each set of leaves. So I'm going to click on this end of it and I'm just going to move this very slightly down and just check it for the entire length. And I think that's pretty good. I'll control zero, control or command zero to get back to seeing the entire document. I'm going to select over all of these shapes. That is this shape here and the line, which is controlling the entire element. And firstly, expand the object. So choose expand appearance and then I'm going to choose ungroup and do that until ungroup is no longer an option, which is no longer. I'm going to grab the last of these leaves, alt or option drag a duplicate away. I'm going to select it with the selection tool, rotate it 
and just place it in position at the end. And if I'm happy with that, I'm going to select over all of these items and Control or Command G to group them. And again, we'll make a brush out of them. So I'm just going to drag it into the brushes panel. It's an art brush. I'll click OK. The direction is correct. The colorization method is tint. It's set to stretch to fit stroke length. So I'll just click OK. And now I'll move this element out of the way because I no longer need it. And let's go back and create a wreath using it. I'm going to do it the exact same way. Drag out an ellipse holding the shift key down as I do it. Make sure that it's set to a black stroke and no fill. I'm going to cut the wreath or the circle, the ellipse, at two points. One is the topmost anchor point and the second one is the bottommost anchor point. So I have two halves of this circle. Now I'm going to select one half of the circle with the selection tool and click on my art brush. Select the other half, click on my art brush. We know that the brush is going to be applied the wrong way around this half circle and that's fine because we're going back to the pen tool. We're just going to click on this anchor point to reverse the path and then we're going to control or command click away just to deselect the pen tool. Now what I need to do is to just bring this path into alignment and I can also rotate it a little bit if I wish. And then just match up the ends. Now the way that we've created these wreaths using brushes that can have tints applied to them, you'll find that the stroke colour is going to affect what colour the wreaths are. So if you want a red wreath, all you need to do is to select red as your stroke colour and the wreath will be red or blue or whatever colour it is that you want it to be. That was controlled by the tint setting. The fact that we set the colour method on that brush to be tint allows us to recolour any of these shapes at any time. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.